Hey, what's up, nerds? This is Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall back once again. Uh, so I've been doing some thinking lately, and I realized I think I've been doing this Warhammer thing like all wrong for the past like nine years or so. Um, I think it's important in life in general to just kind of be introspective once in a while, or for me, it's pretty frequently, and just kind of examine life and uh, figure out. You know, am I doing something wrong? And can I do something better? Have more fun? Have greater effect in life? So this video is kind of about that in relation to uh, my collecting and army building and all of those sorts of things. Maybe this will be useful for you. I don't know. This is just kind of me gathering thoughts for myself. If you think it's useful, cool. If not, eh, you wasted I don't know, 20 minutes of your life. So here's kind of how I have been collecting armies. Um, I tend to go tall, not wide, meaning I collect like everything in one army uh, rather than having a bunch of different armies. I've only got four armies after collecting for now about nine years. Um, well, four AOS armies, and then one uh, Old World army. Um, I have a lot of army, or a lot of models that have never seen Battlefield. I've got uh, enough in each army to basically field any list that I want. And that's kind of what I end up doing is, okay, I am going to... Like, the way I ended up with so much Magikin to begin with was, um, okay, I want to be able to field any combination of units. Um, so, you know, I could, you know, going back to uh, the second edition book, I could fit like 35, 40 Blight Kings in a list, and then I wanted to be able to group them in tens and fives without having like excess command models in a unit. So it just kind of kept going and now I have 50 plus a bunch of like random converted guys and stuff like that that are just kind of fun to do. Um, I, I have stuff to field lists that I'll never play and have never played. And um, it, it, it's weird that I've kind of thought that forever, like, oh, I just need every. I need to be a completionist about this and um, not to get into overly personal stuff, but um, you know, I have OCD like clinical OCD, um, you know, uh, diagnosed by a psychiatrist, you know, on a lot of medication for it and uh, not like, Oh, I like having a real neat house. I'm so OCD. Like, no, like doing something that, is contrary to what my OCD tells me to do, makes me like uh, physically uncomfortable, um, like anxious. And, uh, you know, if it gets bad, it's like anxiety attack. Um, you know, it kind of ends up driving your life. So um, I realize now and then what things in my life are kind of driven by OCD. And I think my Warhammer collection really kind of has been that. And uh, so I think I need to look at things and maybe make some changes going forward to do more fun stuff. So <laughs> I did, you know, channeled my OCD and looked at what my current collection actually looks like. I've got about 14,000 points of Magikin, 8,000 points of Slaves to Darkness, uh, 8,000 points of Skaven, and 6,000 points of Cities of Sigmar, and... That 6,000 points of Cities of Sigmar is deceptive because I also have a whole lot of stuff that is, it no longer has War Scrolls in Cities of Sigmar. So I have like uh, like 30 Great Swords and 30 Crossbows and a bunch of other stuff that just, it doesn't have War Scrolls anymore. So I, that's not even counted in that number. Uh, so I have about 36,000 points of Age of Sigmar. Now, all of that is almost all of that is painted and based as well. That's um, really not counting stuff that is unpainted. So, um, also amongst this, this is really only three different paint schemes as well. 
uh, the Magikin and the Slaves to Darkness are in the same paint scheme, and they're kind of, they were originally basically the same army and kind of grew into being two separate things. Um, you know, at, at, once we got the third edition book, uh, some things just didn't work anymore with having combined Slaves to Darkness and Magikin. Uh, also in this, this doesn't include all of the other models that I have that just kind of don't fit anything, that don't really necessarily have War Scrolls or are, I don't know, they're not like in these armies. Like I've got like 20 old metal Pestigore because they're cool to collect. And, uh, you know, when we still had Beast of Chaos in the game, well, I mean, I guess we have them for another year, but, um, you know, they are being counted as uh, coalition Vestigor um, for like narrative games and stuff. And, uh, you know, I I've just been also collecting old Nurgle models. And uh, so I've got a bunch of other crap there that isn't really counted in the number. So average army size is like 9,000 points, uh, not counting all of that other stuff. And then I've got about uh, 6,000 points of Warriors of Chaos. Um, and I've got a lot of models like that includes stuff that's not fully painted and based at all yet and all of that, um, which is actually going to come in handy for uh, what I'm going to talk about a couple slides from now. So just an idea of what I've actually used in my Magikin. Um, Blight Kings, I own 50, as I said, max I think I've ever put on the table was 30, maybe 35. Uh the max I've used in 3rd edition is 10, so 20% of what I own. I've got 120 Plague Bearers. The most I think I've ever put on the table is 60, and I think the max I've ever used in 3rd edition is 30. Um, Puscoil Blight Lords, I've got 10 of them. I think the most I've ever put on the table is 8. Um, Plague Drones, I've got 12. I mean, I think the answer for 3rd edition may actually be 0, but generously saying 3. And then Beasts of Nurgle, I own eight. Most I've ever fielded is probably four. Um, so, like, why? Why do I do this? Um, again, uh, just wanting all the things. Like, the demons were also expanded on a bit so that I had enough to summon stuff. And I don't know why I thought I was ever going to field, like, six or nine plague drones and then want to summon even more. But... Um, you know, I wanted to have everything, every option open to me. Um, so points I've actually used in third edition, it's about like 6,000 points of my collection that I've actually put on the table, which is less than half. And out of that, like 2,000 points of that is just in five models, like the three Magath Lords, a great unclean one, and the Glockin. So... Um, that number's actually, you know, you, you chop that out, it's actually substantially less in terms of just, like, model count that uh, I've used that I own. So, like, it, it's it's crazy. I could do similar things for my other armies. Like, for some reason, I have, like, 40 or 50 Chaos Warriors just for my Slaves to Darkness army and another, like, 40 at least for my um, Warriors of Chaos. Um, you know, it, it, it kind of goes on like that. I've got like 20 Chaos Knights and then uh, 20 more for Warriors of Chaos. Like, like, why have I done this to myself? I don't know. Um, and all, like, all the Magikin and all of the Slaves to Darkness are in that, like, awful to paint yellow color scheme. Although I think a lot of it, like, when I do it well, it looks really cool. Um, the, and it, it's really, like, offbeat and different from the way people typically paint Nurgle stuff. Like, you don't see a lot of yellow in uh, Nurgle as, like, a prominent color. So, um, yeah, um, I've, I've gone overboard on collecting. So what do I want to do differently going forward? I mean, I just don't need everything. Um, I have literally every war scroll in the Magikin army um, in like the proper models, plus a bunch of out of print stuff. And, you know, I, I that is that has turned into like just a collection. Like I just want everything because I love the army and I want it all. 
Um, I've got a tremendous number of the War Scrolls out of uh, Slaves of Darkness as well, and pretty much everything in Warriors of Chaos. Not necessarily every combination, but like an insane number. And I, I think I need to go with like only really buying the stuff that I'm reasonably likely to play. Um, you know, go wider, not taller. So having smaller armies and having more of them. So I get a variety in painting and different play and all of that stuff. Um, if I cut back from that average of 9,000 for armies to like three to 4,000, it's going to give me like two to three times as many armies available to me, um, which I could have had like four to eight other armies on top of what I already own um, if I went and did that. So like, uh, I don't know, it's kind of wasteful. Um, it just gives me a lot more variety in a lot of different ways and gives me more paint schemes to mess around with and experiment, which is something else that I'm, I've really got as a goal right now. But it's not too late to change. It never is. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to constantly buy new stuff and expand my collection. So um, I've got a lot of stuff that is unpainted or unbuilt. Uh, in my Warriors of Chaos army, I've got some things that are still like new on inbox, new on sprue that I haven't done anything with. And I could sell off these excess models or repurpose them in some way. I've got uh, the whole bunch of stuff going on. Not going to reduce the Magikin, um, but I've got ideas for army plans and projects. So. Uh, Slaves to Darkness. Um, my Slaves to Darkness currently is just all converted Nurgle stuff, and it's all in that same yellow paint scheme. So I really kind of want to go and do more Slaves to Darkness, oddly enough. I love the, that model line. I just think it's really cool. Um, so I think it would be awesome to kind of create a new Slaves to Darkness army um but really embrace using different marks on different units um uh, kind of reinforcing the role that those units have uh, that's also assuming that like the fourth edition rules are going to also really kind of lean into that which they might not so we'll kind of see um, i'm not going to do any of these projects until we get all of the information on fourth edition um it, having this also <laughs> creates like like if i expand my projects and all of that it's going to create a lot of new um opportunities for conversions which is something else that i really love to do so it's going to give me a more diverse bits collection uh, by having more different armies available to me um i may uh split my cities of sigmar and uh you know split that up into uh, an empire army for the old world. Maybe pick up some of the new cities of Sigmar units and models as well to kind of fill some of that out. Um, my Skaven are probably going to get rebased for old world because I hate playing hordes in uh, Age of Sigmar. It's just awful to move 40 models in one unit and have like 200 models on the board. I just don't want to do that. Um, new armies definitely are on the table like i want to get new stuff i've got fun ideas for hobby projects and i don't even know where to begin so um also spearhead i think is going to be a great opportunity to jump into more armies and have a more diverse uh collection to do a lot of different stuff so um i'm kind of like looking at the spearheads to start there's a few of them that i think look pretty cool um like uh soul blight um it has a lot of the stuff that i like from that army in the spearhead box you know it, you've got vampire stuff and you've got skeletons i'm really not a fan of the zombies just because i don't want to paint that many models that have that much detail on them uh and i don't really like hordes but the skeletons feel like they're a lot more reasonable so, um, you know, I actually have uh, some ideas for Lumineth. I kind of want to make like Dark Lumineth, 
um, and mix in some bits from you know dark elves and uh, some like slanesh, uh, other stuff that seems like it would all kind of fit in and be cool looking. Um, I don't know some other armies as well. Just uh, you know, Ossiarch Bone Reapers is pretty cool. I think it would be uh, fun to do something with them. Uh, the, beyond that, I mean, who knows? There's a lot of cool armies in this game, and I really need to go explore and do stuff. And if I'm limiting myself more to, um, you know, three or four thousand points of an army instead of just going ham and trying to own everything right off the rip, um, I think I'm going to have more fun. Um, and I'll be able to just put other stuff on the table too. Um, it, uh, you know, unfortunately now I like don't really want to put my Slaves of Darkness on the table because I'm just I just don't feel good about the paint jobs on it. And uh, although the conversion concepts were cool for that, like I think my execution was really lazy and sloppy on a lot of them. So um, I think a lot of that just needs to be redone in a variety of ways. So I mean that's gonna be it for today i think i'm just kind of rambling i'm on like not enough sleep i don't know why i keep doing videos in some sort of reduced mental capacity but hey that's uh where i'm at today at least i prepared this when i was like in my right mind um hopefully i didn't ramble and be stupid too much but um i think uh the the message overall is you know, I think I'm going to stick to, I have one army that I really love in my maggot kin, and I'm just going to kind of continue to go ham on that. But uh, as far as everything else, I think I can just live quite happily with smaller forces um, and just kind of limit myself a little bit more, explore hobby opportunities and different paint schemes and things like that, cool conversions and... Uh, just kind of move on from there and have more fun with this. Um, anywho, going to call it there. Thanks for watching. Uh, check out Dice Trade Depot down in the description for all of your awesome customized dice tray needs. And I will talk to you all later.